uh, just a reminder, please uh, use the hand feature and we'll try and get you a question in regards to our student athletes and uh, head coach Mike Woodson. Uh, joining us uh, on the on the far end, uh, Jordan Geronimo, uh, 15.7 rebounds. Trace Jackson Davis in the middle, 29 points, nine rebounds. Uh, Indiana will play on Thursday in Portland, Oregon against number five seed St. Mary's. Uh, we will start our press conference with uh, Coach Woodson. Coach, if you could, just a statement on your basketball team here tonight. Great effort on everybody's part. I thought Wyoming, you know, their staff did a great job with their team playing extremely hard and really pushed us. And I thought our guys responded. Um, I thought our defense was really the key when we were struggling offensively to make shots. But we just kept grinding and, you know, I found another another player tonight off the bench and that was Geronimo who gave us a major, major lift tonight. And uh, Trace was who he, he's been pretty much all year. So with that being said, I'll let you guys have it. For questioning, we will start with our student athletes. And uh, in regards to questions, uh, please say your name, your affiliation. Uh, we'll begin here in the front row, uh, right here on the end. Jeff Rapp, John Speaks.com. Trace, I'd like to get your thoughts on the way Jordan played and the lift he gave you guys tonight. Um, honestly, even throughout the Big Ten tournament, I think Geronimo has been a key to our run. So um, I wasn't surprised at all. Man, he's an energy guy. He's going to go rebound. He's going to go get things at the top of the backboard and dunk it hard. So i um, happy for him because he's, he's performing at a really, really high level for us. And without him, we probably would have lost that game. So credit to him. Stay in the front row. Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Uh, Trace, uh, what do you remember about JG when he came to campus as a freshman? Man, JG, um, he always had a smile on his face. He was really goofy. I mean, his first year he struggled a little bit, but he stuck with it. I mean, this summer, this past summer, he was working super hard, working on his jump shot, just working on everything, just get ready for this year and prepare him for this moment. And I couldn't be happier for him because, as you can tell, the work that he put in in the summer, is he's reaping the benefits. Let's go to the back row. Trace, Dominique Gates with WLKY in Louisville. Uh, just what does it mean to be able to, after a six-year NCAA tournament drought, just what does it mean to be able to get a win and continue playing in the NCAA tournament? Um, it's huge. Um, uh, it's uh, surreal, this environment, even just for the first four game, it was a surreal environment. Um, I've always dreamed about playing in this tournament and finally just being able to live out that dream and just performing at the highest level, I, I'm truly grateful. Second row. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Jordan, uh, you, you went out on uh, Friday with the, with the injury. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit real quickly just sort of what's happened with you physically from then until now and how good you felt tonight because it looked like it didn't slow you down any. Um, yeah, uh, I just give thanks to my our, uh, our team trainer, uh, Tim, Tim Garrow. He helped me uh, through just plenty of treatment sessions, just getting my ankle right, just, you know, uh, rehabbing all that kind of stuff. And just my teammates just, you know, keeping me confident and, you know, just, you know, just telling me to, you know, you know breathe, calm down, because, you know, we, we, um, I'm able to come back. So and I just kept it with me, and um, that's how I was able to come back. First row, near side. Jordan, I guess just to keep going on that story, I guess, uh, at, at what point did it, today did you know you were going to be able to go? Uh, did it uh, limit you at all? Because obviously it seemed like it didn't. Uh, just, just tell me more about the, the feeling there and obviously how you were able to sort of play with that level of explosion coming off of that injury. Yeah, um, well, like I said, you know, Tim Girl has been doing a really good job and, you know, just getting me better. And, you know, as the days went by, I just started feeling like a lot better and better. And I was even surprised myself, you know, how, like, good I felt uh, today. And... You know, I, I just trusted my feelings, trusted how I felt, and uh, I just played how I, I usually play, you know, just explosive, so. First row in the middle. Gracie Barr, inside the hall, you two combined for over half of your team's points, but can you touch on the contributions from the rest of your team in terms of hustle on the floor and on the boards? Um, yeah, it was an all-around effort by all of our guys. It might not all be in the scoring column, but um, there was tough shots that people hit down the stretch. I remember Parker hitting a pull-up jump shot. Um, then all the combo guards doing a really good job on their uh, number. I can't think of Mabunk. What's his name? Hunter. 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 
yeah, so he did a great job on him, especially with him backing down. He had the ball in his hands about 80%, 70% of the time. So um, it's always not going to be your night offensively, but defensively I thought we did really good. Third row, far side. Zach Growth with ABC 21 in Fort Wayne. Trace, you've been waiting for this moment for such a long time. How did it kind of live up to what you thought it would be going into tonight? Um, it was honestly surreal. Um, uh, we didn't want to be in the playing game, but sometimes the ball doesn't roll your way and some things happen. But just be playing in front of our fans and almost like a home crowd one more time, um, I thought it was awesome. And then just being on this national stage, I thought it was really cool. Fourth row. Trace, Trace, Chris Hagan, Fox 59, Indianapolis. You, you talked about maybe this be a launching point, you know, coming to the first four. How can a game like this, when you're playing a team that's also the same winner go home mentality, maybe serve you better when you do head out there to Portland? Yeah, I honestly think that it helped us a lot because um, I think that the last three days before this or four days, we were playing our best basketball. So it's almost a sense of we get to step on the court before everyone else and we get to continue playing pretty well. Even though we, our shots didn't fall tonight, um, just being able to get our feet wet with the tournament, kind of what's going on with the balls and everything, I thought it was good for us. Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, Tracy, you just mentioned the work that Jordan had put in over the summer. I guess this is for either one of you, but Jordan, what, what was the routine kind of like over the summer in terms of – uh, you getting in work and, and I traced what what did you see Jordan do over the summer? You want to take it first? Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I guess one thing I try to uh, uh, keep up was just consistency. Just trying to get in the gym every day, no matter what I did. Was if it's just free throws that day or just getting shots up or working on my dribbling, whatever it is, just trying to be consistent because um, you know it, it goes a long way. And uh, and every time I work out, uh, I work out with Isaac Green, one of our trainers. He always tells me to work out hard, to go hard every single time. And, you know, I, I just kept at it. And uh, all the other trainers, you know, the rebounders helping me out. It, like, you know, I just had a whole support program with me. This program is, you know, really good at uh, building their players up. So I just used what I had. Yeah, kind of what he said, um, just watching him, just the repetition, how hard he works, and then um, even, like, doing things on the gun at night, seeing him come in here and work on that. And then I think it just really just boosts his confidence because he comes into the game ice cold, and he'll come in shooting that midi just with all the confidence in the world, and he hits it 95% of the time. So um, you reap what you sow, and he's reaping the benefits. Two more questions for our student athletes right here in the front. Uh, Jordan, just how much does a tip dunk get you going, I guess, when you've been out and, and, and all that, basically, and, and offense is going slow, when you get an opportunity to get like that in the break, just how much did that do for you? How much did that kind of just get you started? Uh, it is a lot for me. I mean, it just gives me a lot of energy, you know, it gives the team energy, and um, it's just a energy play. A tip dunk is energy play, you know what I mean? And it just, I guess, does a lot, you know, yeah. <laughs> Chase, you, you guys have talked about Jordan's impact on defense, but I mean, do you still maybe have a moment where you shake your head when I think you, I think there was a point where he just took the ball out of Maldonado's hands in midair? It wasn't even a block. I think he basically just took it out of his hands. Yeah, um, he's a freak. That's what we call him, a freak of nature. Um, so sometimes even in the huddle, he'll do something. I'll look at him and say, you're a freak, because some, some of the things that he does is just – out of out of this world, um, he's blessed with God-given uh, athleticism and talent, and you get to dis see it on display. And I think that's really cool. Trace Jordan, outstanding showing tonight. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. All right, the rest of our questions will be directed towards uh, head coach Mike Woodson. Let's start in the back, fourth row on the end, right here. No, nope. yeah, there you go. Mike, I know we're going to talk a lot about Jordan and what he did tonight, but most importantly, you look down there, the offensive rebounds, you guys had a, at one point a 15-4 to 4, uh, lead in that category, and half of his points came off of offensive putbacks. How critical is it having a guy that can go up and not only get that rebound, but put it back in? It's very critical. I mean, Race had a couple of them as well. Um, you know, we knew once, you know, the big fella Ike had a few fouls early. You know, we had the advantage on the inside, and I thought Geronimo and Race and Trace kind of had their way pretty much uh, throughout the game, which we needed it because we were struggling to get points. Let's go in the back, near side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNHI. Um, Maldonado, uh, 10 turnovers. He also has 21 points. But was there something that you saw in him, particularly uh, on film, uh, that caused you guys to uh, cause him the kind of trouble you did, particularly in the first half? I think he turned it over seven times. Well, again, you know, we tried to stay at home with the shooters and, 
you know, I figured if 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 he was gonna, they were gonna beat us, he would have to be the one. We did an excellent job, I thought, the first half on Ike. Um, but you know, his back downs. You know, I just try to tell our guys not to get so over alarmed. You know, I mean, if we left the three-point shooters and doubled him, then that exposes us in that category. And I thought we did a great job in guarding the three-point line and uh, limited them to twos. Coach Kevin Burr, Indiana Student Television. Um, it was your first game as uh, it was your first game in March Madness as a coach. What did you learn today? What was the experience like? Well, I still got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun. You know, I mean, being my first time in and. But again, guys, this is not about me, man. This is about these guys that wear this uniform and my staff and helping me trying to push these guys over the top, man. And I thought tonight, man, they they answered the bell loud and clear. Second row. Uh, Keegan Nixon with TheHoosier.com. Uh, Coach, you had about a two-and-a-half-minute stretch with no trace, no race, no X, and then they gave up four points to Wyoming. How gritty of a stretch was that for your bench, and how much did that help you kind of limit the damage? Again, guys, we've been great defensively all year. And I thought early on, you know, I mean, we couldn't find offense and they couldn't find it. And, you know, I told the guys in the huddle, hey, it's, it's going to be a grind, one of those ugly games, you know, but we just got to stay the course. And, and we did. Finally, we got a little spurt here and there. And, and then coming down the home stretch, we got the spurt that we needed to push it over the top. We. George Montgomery, Fox Sports National Radio. You look nice, George. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, you guys have played um, Big Ten tournament in front of a lot of Hoosier fans in Indianapolis, a lot of Hoosier fans here tonight in Dayton. Now you're traveling three time zones, and I doubt seriously if there's going to be 8,000 Hoosier fans in Portland. I just wanted to know how you're going to compensate without all those fans in, in Portland. Uh, keep that energy level the way these kids have been playing. Well, can I tell, can I say that Hoosier Nation, I need you all, I need 8,000 people in Portland. Can we, can we do that? You can say whatever you want to say. Uh, well, I hope we have a, a heck of a crowd out there. I hope they travel. We travel pretty, pretty far. But with that being said, you know, we still got to play the game. We can't run from it. St. Mary's is a great program. They've had a hell of a year. And, um, you know, we got to go down and, Go back and break this game tape tonight down and learn from it and then get ready for St. Mary's. All right, two more questions for Coach. We'll go to the third row. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to stick – Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier. I wanted to stick with the theme of playing in Portland in, in basically 48 hours. What is your plan for the next couple of days? You know, you, you're obviously going to get in very late tonight or early tomorrow morning. You've got to practice, prepare, media obligations. What, what – what is your plan to keep your guys fresh? Well, we already got St. Mary's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, we had planned ahead, you know, in case, you know, we did win. We felt good about coming in here. And so we already got them ready to go. Um, but I never let our players get by from the game they just played. So we got to break this tape down and, and learn from it and our mistakes and then move on to, to St. Mary's. Um, you know, we'll get in sometime tomorrow, and we'll spend the whole day getting ready, um, try to find a gym where we can do some work, and uh, get ready to play on Thursday. Last question. Jeff Rowe, John Speaks. Com. I'd, I'd like to get your take. What did you think of Jordan Geronimo's play tonight, and why do you think he was so impactful for you guys in the NCAA tournament in such a big stage? Well, again, it's a big stage for everybody that's wearing it. It's a big stage for me. You know, this is my first go around as well. But I just thought, you know, sometimes in, and I call it playoff basketball and, you know, tournament play, you know, you find a, a guy that steps up for you. And he was the guy tonight. And, hell, it could be. Galloway the next night or Tamar Bates, you know, that's kind of the team we've had all season. And uh, I'm just happy for the young man because we needed the 15 points that, that he gave us and his defensive presence on the floor. So it was a total team effort, man, and we're going to need that moving forward. Coach, thank you so much. Good luck on Thursday in Portland. Thank you.